Looking at our first example then, uh, we've, both, we've got Billy and we've got Mel, uh, who both each have two four-sided spinners. Uh, they spin the spinners and add the scores together, so the possible um, scores they can get vary from two uh, up to eight. Uh, and we've got observed values for Billy and the observed values for Mel. Uh, we've then calculated what we would expect to get for each of the scores. So we've got observed and expected values to compare. The null and alternative hypotheses for um, this test is always the same. Uh, the null hypothesis is that the observed distribution is the same as the theoretical one. In this case, meaning the spinner is unbiased. And the alternative hypothesis is that the observed distribution is different from the theoretical, suggesting that the spinner is biased. Okay, so they're always the same for goodness of fit tests, and they're always uh, that way around. So to now calculate the goodness of fit for both students, um, we calculate first of all for Billy observed minus expected squared all over uh, expected. And same thing uh, for Mel, and then we add them all together. So for Billy, we get an a goodness of fit statistic of 7.755, and uh, the equivalent results for Mel 22.608, suggesting Billy's results match up with the expected much more closely than uh, Mel's do. Okay. Uh, so Mel's goodness of fit is higher, so she is more likely to have the biased spinner. And we're going to look at in um, future lessons how we go about actually looking to see whether these values are significant or not and actually perform uh, the hypothesis test um, in a more uh, rigorous way. But essentially, the higher the value of x squared, the higher the goodness of fit the less similar the observed is to the theoretical, is the basic idea. So as I mentioned earlier, in the vast majority of cases, you're probably going to just use your calculator uh, to find the goodness of fit. Um, and there is that function on your calculator. So you need to, first of all, enter the observed and the expected in list one uh, and list two in stats mode. Okay, uh, and then once you've got those lists in place, then you want to click on test. Okay, once you click on test, then you'll have the option of chi and then goodness of fit. Okay, uh, and that will then bring up um, this screen. And if you execute that, it will then give you your goodness of fit value. Um, We'll talk about degrees of freedom and, and the probability value uh, a little bit further on. So your goodness of fit um, value can be just taken from your calculator as soon as you've got the observed and the expected um, stored in your lists. And that's the way that you will probably do goodness of work out goodness of fit in the vast majority of cases unless questions actually force you to go down the, uh, the formula route.